going on everybody? So today we're gonna to be starting a new video. This is an older DD15 to 2010, I believe. So it's non-deaf. And this DD15 is having some regen issues. Uh, appears to have low coolant. So there's a few things we're gonna check. The filters are going to be cleaned. Now this has the old style filter. Let me show you which one that is in a second. But let's look at the miles so you guys can see this. All right guys, just so you see this for yourself. We do have obviously a few lights and that's why the truck is here. We have a fault code, uh, engine high. So it is 128, 15500. I don't really care about that right now because I'm gonna plug in. But this is what I wanted to show you, 1.25 million miles. So 1,253,000 miles. That's very impressive, all original. Uh, we're gonna be doing a few things. Like I said, uh, I just checked the EGR cooler. There's no issues there. There's no coolant on the hot, crossover. It's going about 2,000 miles since we last did a forced park regen. Uh, again, I checked the crossover hot pipe to see if there's any coolant in there, and there's none. Uh, coolant is low, so one of two things. Uh, I'm guessing something's going on inside the engine block. Again, 1.2 million miles, things are going to go south. That's just the way you guys can do. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see it there, that is your doser right behind the turbo, right? So that's the diesel doser valve. We're going to go ahead and replace that. I'm sorry, not replace it, but we're going to clean that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this cover off. We're gonna remove the fuel line, which is right there. And then we're gonna back that off and we're gonna clean behind the, um, the S-pipe. Once we do that, we're still gonna remove the filter, the, the, uh, the capsule. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what this filter looks like, again, this is non-deaf. So there's your filter, it's mounted up underneath the cab. Every once in a while, it'll be behind the cab. That's usually on a day cab. So we're gonna drop this, we're gonna send the DOC and the DPF to be cleaned and baked. Hopefully that'll resolve the issue, but again, with that many miles, you have to expect that you're gonna start having some engine problems. Injector problems, you're gonna have other, other issues potentially. So let's get started. We're gonna drop the filter, we're gonna inspect it, and then send it out to be cleaned, and hopefully that'll resolve the okay, issue. So we got the filter out of these, the, out of the Sentry, uh, the Freightliner Sentry. Just wanna show you the inside of the DOC. I don't know if you can see it that well. I'm gonna to try to zoom in and focus, but there you go. So that's the face of it. Uh, this do the DLC, it's, I don't think it's actually that bad, the DLC, but the DPF is definitely going to be where the issue is right now as far as the soot level high. So that's the code that we're getting. Uh, so right now we're going to take this thing apart. Once I get it apart, I'm going to show you the DOC side and the DPF side and get a better idea okay, of what's So this going filter on. style is actually much easier than the one box. As you can tell, there's only two belts or two straps. This is one of them, and that is the other one there. You're going to need a 13 mil. Once you do that, you're going to loosen that up, and this should literally just come right out and you'll be able to see the face of it. Uh, you can see there's some stains on here. That's probably gonna be maybe fuel, oil. Again, engine has 1.2 million miles, so that is some serious mileage uh, for this type of truck. Um, the, the truck itself might just be too dirty, and that might, be, that's might, uh, might be causing this entire problem here with, with the filter getting plugged or just really dirty. Again, as you can tell, there's a lot of, uh, again, it could be fuel, it could be um, oil and that's going to be the DPF the face of the DPF inlet and then the outlet I'll show you that right now in a second so we're going to send these out to the DPF DOC shop so they can clean them bake them do whatever they do uh, we'll get them back in maybe about 24 hours hopefully less we'll put it all back together do a nice clean regen and we'll be all set so let's start taking this thing apart a little bit further and we'll go so we there. have our new filters that came back not our new filters but we have our original filters that came back uh, they were serviced, they were cleaned out. So a few things that we're gonna need, we're gonna need new gaskets. That's the part number, those are the two gaskets we're gonna need. We are replacing one temp sensor. That's the DOC inlet sensor. Now, one thing I wanna show you really quick are the filters or the readings for the filter. So the DPF filter, that's a serial number. That's how much soot was removed from the DPF. Okay, 259 grams removed, flow tested, flow test is good. Typically, you should be removing about 100 to 125. So this is definitely super high, extremely high. Uh, DOC, same thing, 129. You should be removing about 100 grams of soot. So anyway, this is all done and it's ready to go. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the filters right now. We're gonna put it back together and we're gonna go from there. Just like that, you put together your filter. It's actually very simple, like I mentioned in the video before. Two clamps, one, two, 
that's about it. So this is your DOC. Obviously this is what comes in from the motor. There's your DPF and then that is the outlet. The outlet is just a housing. There's really nothing there. So you're gonna need to mount that, secure that. We're gonna put one new temp sensor. I showed you that one earlier. It's gonna go there, that's your DOC inlet. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and mount that or install it back into the truck. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So again, very simple, very easy. Um, a lot different than the one box. Don't forget your serial number. You are gonna need that so you can input that into the MCM, okay? That's pretty much it for this. So we're gonna put it back together and then we're gonna go ahead and get it installed. Okay guys, and we are back. So now we're, we have the filter installed. Everything's been cleaned. We're still gonna have these, oops, sorry about that. We're still gonna have those lights present, the check engine light, stop engine light, and then the flashing light letting us know, hey, we need to do a regen of sorts. So we're gonna go ahead and connect. Uh, let's see here, I'm trying to make it where you don't get that much of a glare, but let's take a look and see what we have, guys. And okay, so we're connected. And again, we are still going to have our check engine light present, okay? And that's because we have this fault code, which is gonna pop up in a second once it loads. And here we go, DPF ash clean request, which is telling us our filter is at its limit and needs to be serviced. Fault code 3720 FMI 15. And then the last code we have is the soot very, I'm sorry, soot level very high, SPN 37 19 FMI zero, okay? Uh, and again, I explained that, that this thing is at its limit. I hopefully showed you guys just how dirty it was. We are at zone five. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna start the truck. We're gonna let it warm up. Uh, right now we're about 117. So I wanna get it close to about 140, 150 before we actually start the regen. So I'm gonna start the truck up. But before I do that, you can go into actions, after treatment, and then you're gonna input here where it says DPF ash accumulator. That serial number that's on the side, okay? That's where you're gonna input that number, okay? Which if I'm not mistaken, starts with SHM, and then I'm gonna look up the serial number right now and input that, give me one second. All right guys, so we have the, the DPF serial number installed or inputted. Now we just need to do one thing and that's gonna be set. It's gonna ask you yes or no, you're gonna click on yes, and then it will reset it. Now you still have to do a regen, okay? You still have to do a park regen in order to clear the codes. So the codes will not go away, it will not just disappear magically. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Okay, so we have to do a park regen. Regen should take about 30 to 35 minutes. It actually doesn't take that long like the one box does. And right now what we're gonna do is close this out and we'll do a regen in a second. As you can tell, code is still there, right? Soot level, very high, 3719 FMI zero. So I'm gonna start the truck up, I'm gonna let it warm up, do a regen and we will go from there. So we should be good to go. Um, one thing I'm gonna check really quick is the coolant level because I know it said coolant level low. I don't wanna do the regen. A check engine light comes up, it aborts, and then I have to start all over again. So let's do that really quick. We'll start it up and we'll warm it up. Again. Okay guys, so we started up the engine and again, not warm enough now. I've gotta get it to about 150 more or less and then I'm gonna start doing the regen using the software. Um, software is really the, the best way to go when you're doing a regen, at least when you're forcing a regen. Go to your service routines, you're gonna go up to your DPF system, and then when it's warm enough, you're gonna to go to where it says start. It's gonna prompt you with a couple couple questions, and then it will start doing the regen, or we'll start warming up and then doing a regen. Don't forget, guys, this actually does have a counter, so it counts in seconds. Now, once you get to about 30 minutes, I think that's gonna put you at about 1600 seconds, more or less. So, I'm gonna let it warm up. Once it's warm enough, I'll go ahead and begin the regen process and go from there. Okay, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start the regen right now. Temperature is, I don't know, what is that, about 130, 135, and we're gonna go ahead and get it started. Let's see what we have to do. We're gonna go into the start button, click on start. Uh oh what's going on here? Here we go, click on yes. Uh, okay, so there's a couple things you need to do first. Sometimes you gotta push the clutch pedal, foot brake, release. You're gonna go ahead and pull the brake back out, take your foot off the brake, and then you can go ahead and click start. Once you do that, that tells the computer or that tells the system that you are ready to do a parked regen. So, park regen is now started. Uh, let's go from there and it's gonna warm up. Once it actually warms up, then you're gonna see the second start to count. 
that's officially when your regen begins. So again, typically a regen is gonna be about 30 to 35 minutes. So I'm not gonna bore you for 35 minutes. Pressure looks good so far. I know we just started, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. These temperatures should climb. You're gonna see your depth doser, I'm sorry, your diesel doser, injection, and a PSI. That'll start to jump up in a, you know, once it warms up. So let's let it warm up. I'll show you guys what I find and we'll, we will go from there. Okay guys, just to show you really quick what's happening, uh, the doser fuel line, the pressure, 33, right around there. The percentage, 15, that's good. So once these start to kick in, these temperatures will start to rise. The seconds haven't started yet. It, it typically takes about three minutes to five minutes once it actually warms up before this will start. But either way, I just want to show you what we have. Um, and that's really about it. So again, I'll jump back in, show you some more in a right. second. And there you have it. It's starting the regen officially. Regen time, 88 seconds, 90 seconds, so on and so forth. So again, it's going to just count all the way until it gets to, again, 1600 seconds or whatever it is. So start a timer. It's a good way to, you know, just to make sure everything is running good. Your temperatures look good. Look at that, 900. 47, 871, and then the DOC inlet at 587. So that's pretty good. I'm just gonna let it run. Uh, remember, while you're doing the regen, do not touch any of the pedals that will abort the regen, okay? The check engine light will stay there, and that is because of the soot, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a quick look. Uh, yeah, soot level very high. So again, this is the code we're actually working on right now. So I'm gonna let the regen do its thing. All right, guys, so we're still doing a regen right now. We are about 900, almost 1,000 seconds into it. So if you do the math, uh, 300 seconds is five minutes. So do the math from there. Three, six, nine, five, 10, 15. So we're about 15 headed towards 12 minutes, uh, 12, 12 minutes into it. So we still have a ways to go. Uh, temperatures are good. Everything else looks fine. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Uh, so I'll keep you guys posted again. Just wanted to show you where we are and again, we're a thousand seconds into it There's your temps Pressure everything looks really good. So stay tuned. All right guys, so we are about 25 minutes into it if I'm not mistaken. So we're gonna go 3 6 9 12 15 that's 5 10 15. 20. Yep. We're about 20 minutes. Perfect. Look at that Regen just finished right now while I was recording which is fantastic we don't have the check engine light. We do have a different code on the CPC side. That's kind of a generic code which comes and goes depending on what's going on. So I'm not gonna worry about that because we no longer have any more lights on the dash, okay? Check engine light is gone, stop engine light is gone. This is telling you your filter is hot. Brake, obviously because the brake is pulled. And your ABS, anytime you clear the code with using the software with Detroit, it always triggers this ABS. Once you drive about 10 miles per hour, it will erase and it will go away. So, back to the video. Fault code 3719 FMI0 is inactive, that is gone. Okay, I'm gonna go here and verify. We are at zone zero. When we first started, we were at zone five. So now we're at zone zero, which is great. And that's pretty much it. So this will conclude the video. The video itself is all done. Once the regen is ending, you're gonna see the RPMs go back to idle. Temperature will well, it'll work itself out and then your oil pressure will go to roughly about 15 to 20 psi plus or minus and that's pretty much it guys i appreciate you guys watching the video subscribing i you know i can't say enough some of you guys have stopped by and it means a lot you guys come by and say hey you like the videos and i appreciate it very much so again video is all done no more codes we're going to leave that there and that's pretty much it. Guys, if you have any questions, as always, hit me up. I don't mind trying to help you guys out. Um, you know, give me a like, a thumbs up. Definitely give it a thumbs up, man. I appreciate it very much. It helps out. And we'll go from there. Guys, have a great weekend, and we'll, we'll see you guys soon. I have another video coming in for a one box. Uh, that one probably won't get done until next week because I have to wait for that one box to come back from the shop. So, again, that's it. Guys, I will let you guys have a great weekend. I'm, I'm going to stop talking and stop rambling, and we are all done. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.